Let's take a look at the evolution of the fighter plane from the Spod 13 to the F-22 Raptor. Even before air-to-air -air combat between aircraft began, the airplane had begun to show its potential. Over 100 years ago in 1914, during the early days of World War I, in the small industrial towns of Mons in Belgium, the British Army stationed there was being encircled by German forces. This maneuver of German troops was discovered as a result of aerial reconnaissance that was being performed by British aircraft. As a result, the British Army withdrew to a better position and was saved from being encircled and potentially wiped out. The newly invented airplane had proven its value in warfare. Naturally, once the role that aircraft played in information gathering was realized by both sides, steps began to be taken to neutralize the enemy's advantage. Early efforts involved pilots shooting at each other with pistols and sometimes rifles that they or their observer crewmen would carry. Interestingly, there is at least one account of a pilot throwing an empty revolver at an enemy airplane's propeller in an attempt to bring it down. Unsurprisingly, the throw missed. A more effective and accurate solution was needed. In April of 1915, French pilot Roland Garros took off in an airplane armed with a machine gun that fired through the propeller. The propeller had steel blades mounted on it to protect it from bullets that might have struck it as a machine gun was fired. On Garros' first flight, he downed a reconnaissance plane and the fighter aircraft had been born. Throughout the rest of the war, refinements continued to be made to fighter aircraft including machine guns that were synchronized with the propeller to avoid shooting the prop and defensive turrets on observation aircraft and bombers. There were many amazing personalities and figures that emerged during this time. To earn the title of ace, a pilot had to shoot down five or more enemy aircraft. The leading American ace of the war was Captain Eddie Rickenbacker, who flew with the 1st Pursuit Group with the 94th Aero Squadron. Initially flying a Newport 28 and then later a Spod 13, he would end the war with 26 aerial victories. In the 21 years between World Wars 1 and 2, the mostly fabric and wood biplanes were gradually being replaced with metal monoplanes which had liquid-cooled engines. As a result, range and altitude had doubled and top speeds had tripled. The fighter plane was primed to play its biggest role yet. World War II If there was ever any doubt to the effectiveness and necessity of air power, World War II cemented the fighter plane's legacy. During the opening phases of the war, Germany achieved many stunning victories by using a combined arms approach of mass armor formations and tactical strikes with aircraft. In the early stages of the war, the Luftwaffe's fighters and attack planes were on par or better than the contemporaries they faced, and its pilots were generally better trained. In the world's first military campaign to take place primarily in the air, the Battle of Britain proved to be a turning point in the war. Hitler wanted to invade the UK, but needed to eliminate the Royal Air Force first. Daily waves of German bombers and fighters filled the English countryside. The stalwart RAF defenders in their hurricanes and spitfires repelled the invaders, leading Winston Churchill to famously say, Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few, referring to the fighter pilots and crews of the RAF. As the war progressed, strategic bombing became more effective along with anti-air defenses and fighter interceptors. To counter this, the Allies continuously developed long-range fighter escorts, culminating in the P-51 Mustang. The Mustang could escort Allied bombers all the way to targets over Germany and back, providing full-time escort duties to the level bombers. Hermann Göring, Supreme Commander of the Luftwaffe, said, When I saw Mustangs over Berlin, I knew the war was lost. Over in the Pacific Theater, naval aviation came into its own. Beginning with the Battle of Midway, which was the first battle where enemy ships did not fire directly on each other, Instead, carrier air wings traded blows, with U.S. Navy aircraft sinking four carriers to the loss of one. The battle would prove to be unrecoverable for the Japanese Imperial Navy, and fighters such as the Corsair and Hellcat accounted for hundreds of Japanese aircraft destroyed. The Jet Age Towards the end of World War II, a key advancement in combat aircraft appeared. The jet engine, which tremendously increased the speed of fighters. Following the war in 1947, the sound barrier was broken by Chuck Yeager in the X-1, ushering in a new era of flight. Korean War The outbreak of war in Korea still saw many piston-engine propeller-driven fighters such as the Mustang, Sea Fire, Corsair, and Sea Fury used in combat. As the war progressed, however, jets became more common and dominant, with epic battles between F-86 Sabres and MiG-15s in a contested airspace which became known as MiG Alley. Up until and including the Korean War, machine guns were the primary weapon in air-to-air -air combat, with MiG-15s utilizing dual 23mm machine guns and a 37mm cannon. By contrast, the F-86 made use of six 50 caliber machine guns, 
the same weapons that were used in the P-51 Mustang. And while the MiG's guns were larger caliber, they carried fewer rounds and did not have the radar ranging gun sight used on the F-86. Interestingly, the Korean War was the first time G-suits were used, mainly by US pilots. Missile Theory Towards the end of the Korean War and in the years following, a new weapon system became viable which would revolutionize aerial warfare. The air-to-air -air missile. With its high speeds and much longer ranges than conventional guns, the missile was seen as the future of air combat. This school of thought became known as the missile theory and gained such a following that the United States began to introduce new fighters without any guns, most famously in the F-4 Phantom. Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. To succeed in life, you need to stay on the cutting edge. And the best way to do this is to keep adding new skills to your arsenal. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions can come together and expand their creative skills. There are thousands of classes that are designed for the curious and creative. Topics include illustration, design, leadership, photography, and videography. You can also study fine art, graphic design, animation, music production, and so much more. Once you gain the skills to take your creative endeavors to the next level, Skillshare also offers classes in freelance, entrepreneurship, and web development so you can monetize your creative efforts. Skillshare is also perfect for lifelong learners, and whether you're a beginner, a pro, or just a dabbler, Skillshare has something just for you. Members get unlimited access to thousands of classes that fit every skill level. Most classes are under 60 minutes each, so they can fit into any busy schedule. Classes include video instruction, along with included projects so you can get hands-on practice in the new skills you will develop. Additionally, Skillshare is geared towards learning, so there are never any ads along with premium classes that help you stay focused on where your creativity is taking you. You also get the support of fellow creatives who can provide encouragement and inspiration. I myself have taken Skillshare classes and they've helped me in both my career and on this YouTube channel. For a limited time, Skillshare is offering one month free for the first 1,000 of my subscribers who click the link in the description below. So if you're interested in developing a new skill or staying on the cutting edge of learning, now is the time to join and take advantage of the Summer of Creativity special offer. Don't hesitate. Sign up, lock on, and engage. Vietnam War As the US became embroiled in the Vietnam War, tactical aircraft were assigned strike missions in sometimes heavily defended positions. Fast-moving fighters such as the F-105 were heavily loaded with bombs and vulnerable to North Vietnamese fighters which would ambush them on the way to their targets. The Air Force was shocked when the advanced F-105 was being shot down by the obsolete but agile MiG-17. Dogfighting was supposed to be a thing of the past, but the Vietnam War proved that maneuverability was still needed in a fighter. F-4 Phantoms began escorting the F-105s and Colonel Robin Olds famously set up a trap for the MiGs. In an operation that was codenamed BOLO, Olds disguised this flight of F-4s to appear as bomb-laden F-105s and shot down about half of North Vietnam's MiG-21s in an afternoon. Colonel Olds was a World War II pilot and Operation Bolo helped make the case for a reinvestment in dogfighting tactics. This spawned the Navy's top gun and emphasized tactics being taught at the Air Force's Fighter Weapons School. Based on findings and lessons learned from the Vietnam War, the Navy and the Air Force developed their evolution of the F-4 Phantom. The F-14 Tomcat for the Navy and the F-15 Eagle for the Air Force. Both were fast, high-flying, agile fighters equipped with guns. However, while extremely effective and ahead of their time, both the Eagle and the Tomcat were expensive to operate, and during this time a new movement began to take shape in the Air Force. Colonel John Boyd and mathematician Thomas Christie developed a theory known as energy maneuverability, which quantified an aircraft's performance. This theory allowed designers to predict aircraft capabilities and design trade-offs. In the late 1960s, Boyd assembled a group of like-minded military and civilian thought leaders, and this new group became known as the Fighter Mafia. This fighter mafia group initiated a technology evaluation program which became known as the Lightweight Fighter Program or LWF. The LWF proposed an inexpensive lightweight aircraft that could maneuver with minimum possible energy loss along with an increased thrust to weight ratio. The fighter mafia was credited with some influence in the development of the F-15 and heavily influencing the F-16 and F-18. The F-16 Viper aka Fighting Falcon was designed for 9G maneuvers on full internal fuel and as the aircraft evolved from just a day air-to-air -air fighter to a true multi-role aircraft, this proved to be extremely useful. The F-18 Hornet grew out of the F-16's competitor, the YF-17. The Hornet became a carrier-based version of the YF-17 and was tasked with both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground roles from its inception. These new fighters would all play significant roles during the Cold War and especially during the Gulf War.
Gulf War 1991. The Gulf War served to re-emphasize the power of air superiority to the world. Coalition aircraft consisting of Tomcats, Hornets, Eagles, Vipers, Tornadoes, and other aircraft quickly dominated the skies over Iraq and helped attack aircraft such as the A-10 Warthog and AH-64 Apache strike ground targets without worry of being intercepted by enemy aircraft. This unopposed use of air power destroyed most of Saddam Hussein's army before it could fight and greatly shortened the conflict. The Gulf War was also the first time the world saw the newest evolution of air warfare. The F-117 Nighthawk performed the initial strikes on Iraqi air defenses, clearing the way for conventional fighters and bombers. This successful use of stealth was nothing short of revolutionary and became the feature that all modern fighters would need to implement, at least in part. Modern Era 1991 to Present Lessons from the Gulf War and the use of the F-117 led directly to the first fifth-generation stealth fighter, the F-22 Raptor. In a world with ever-improving sensors and air defenses, the ability to remain undetected while tracking and engaging targets is crucial. The Raptor is truly a technological marvel, maintaining all of the maneuverability of fighters like the Eagle, while also being able to supercruise and having a full stealth profile. Introduced in 2005, the Raptor is still the fighter by which all other fighters are compared. The F-35 is also an all-stealth fighter, but was designed to implement an air-to-ground component from its inception. Today, one of the squadrons which operates the F-22 is the 1st Fighter Wing, which traces its roots to World War I's 1st Pursuit Group and contains the 94th Fighter Squadron. The 94th is one of the oldest fighter squadrons in the U.S. Air Force, the same squadron that Eddie Rickenbacker flew in over 100 years ago. The 94th and F-22 Raptor carry a proud legacy of fighter aircraft and pilots and are the tip of the spear. In its over 100-year history, the fighter plane has evolved from wooden fabric biplanes to the composite supercomputer-equipped stealth fighters of today. One thing that has remained unchanged is the aggressive tactics employed by its pilots and the spirit of the fighter plane. What do you think? Is the F-22 still the king of the skies? What will the evolution of the fighter plane be in the next 100 years? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click the subscribe button and then click the bell for notifications so you'll get notified as soon as the next video comes out. I'd like to take a moment and thank my Patreons who directly help support this channel. If you are interested in becoming a Patron, I'll leave a link in the description below. Stay safe and see you next time.